Welcome to the Roadmap to One Million podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Zeal, and if you're looking for the high-level strategies and stories behind building a seven-figure product brand, then you're in the right place. On this show, we'll uncover the advanced strategies, stories, and secrets that you need to know in order to take your e-commerce brand to the next level. Are you ready to uncover your Roadmap to One Million? Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Roadmap to One Million podcast, y'all. My name is Stacy, and I am super excited to have y'all here. Today, we are talking about something that is so important, especially if you are a creative entrepreneur and you're creating content and all this kind of stuff, and you're building a, bu- a business around your expertise. This is definitely going to be the episode for you. But before we dive in, I want to make sure that y'all are following the show. Make sure that you have clicked that follow button because we have new episodes every Tuesday. Uh, but make sure that you share this with a friend. And if you are, if you would be so kind as to leave us a review, that definitely helps us to reach more people um, that really, really need this information. So without further ado, I am super excited to welcome Nikosha Anderson to the podcast. She is a business and intellectual property attorney for the last nine years who primarily assists women creatives who want to legally protect their income producing ideas. Y'all are income producing ideas, y'all. So I am super excited to welcome Nikosha to the show. Welcome so much. Welcome to the show, Nikosha. How are you today? I am so well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, I'm excited for you to be here as well, um, because this is just such a great topic that I think one, I think you make this topic very fun because we can think about like legal stuff and like, you know, kind of be a snooze fest sometimes. But I love your content. I love all the stuff, how you talk about IP and everything. So, yeah, I'm super, I'm super excited to talk. So before we dive into all the content, tell us a little bit about your journey um, to being a business (laughs) attorney as well as CEO. (laughs) Girl, we ain't got that much time, but let me give you the reader (laughs) digest version. So that way your listeners don't get bored by me. Um, So I'm coming up on my 10th year. So uh, this uh, spring will be 10 years um, as a practicing attorney. So I'm super excited about that, but I came from a tech background. So I was, I'm a, I am a lawyer who knows how to code, read code. I'm a lawyer who knows how to do a lot of things that's tech related. So that brought me to have a virtual law practice because who, who wouldn't want to hire someone who does and operates in the same space as they, they do. So, um, I, set out on a core mission to make sure that women, especially women online service providers, have the protection tools they need because you are out here on Al Gore's internets, okay? So I need for you to make sure you are protected. You have the shield of protection in place. Women have traditionally been taught to give so much away, but it's at a disadvantage. So because we have that disadvantage, my goal is to set out to make sure that you all, me and myself as included, are protected as we operate here on these, you know, rough and rugged Al Gore's internet streets. Because it ain't safe, Stacey. It ain't safe. <laughs> it ain't. It ain't. And we're going to talk about how we can protect ourselves. Um, mm-hmm. But I also want to make sure that we, and thank you so much for that introduction. I love um, that you have a tech background and have just, just taken your background and really kind of infuse it into your business. That's something mm-hmm. that I find is a common thread amongst guests who come on this show. It's like, they start, they have this background and it's like, they take all of their combination of all of their experience and bring it to their expertise and put it on the, sh- and put it on the table for everybody to be able to benefit from. So I love that. So let's start with what is intellectual property and why is it important to next level CEOs, especially those that are also creators. So like our podcasters, our, you know, our photographers, all of these creative, all of all the creative entrepreneurs that we all fall into online service providers. Why, what is it foundationally and why is it important for us to pay attention to? All right. So compound your honor, but I'm gonna do my best. (laughs) (laughs) So intellectual property is ultimately anything that you use with your mind to create in some type of physical or in intangible medium. It cannot be an idea. It has to be something that is transformed. An idea that is transformed is intellectual property. It is very important for service providers, people who create 
podcasts or digital content of or graphics or audio or um, blogs or uh, YouTube videos, TikTok, the Tiki Talkies. You know, if you over on the Tiki Talkies and things of that nature, just in general, if you are a creative, you need to leverage that to catapult your business to the next level. So if you are a high level CEO, you as the visionary of your business need to be thinking about how to build up assets because that's going to grow your business in a way that you can't because you can put your IP asset in a basket and t- and shoot it off and you can put another IP b- asset in another basket and shoot it off in a totally different direction. Both of those things could be making you money while you go do a third thing. So it's important that you actually protect the IP so that you can leverage the IP. So I have this acronym. It's called CPS. Most people know that as child protective services, but that ain't what we talking about right now. We are talking about creating, protecting, and sharing. Most people, especially online entrepreneurs, will create it. You guys have no issue creating. Like you are iterators like out of this world. I'm talking to you, Miss. I got tons of ideas in my notes in my iPhone, or I got tons of drafts of reels that I never posted on Instagram. You know, them my people. If you got that, you my people. Yeah. So what I'm saying is you have all these different assets, but you're not leveraging them. Well, what does that mean, Nikosha? What does leverage mean? You keep talking about leverage. What that mean? All right, I'll answer your question. Hold up, swallow up. Just take a deep breath. We won't have no problems. So leveraging just simply means that you take the asset and you use it as a tool that is meant to be. Whether that means you take that asset and allow another course creator to use your module. That's another way I see online service providers leverage their IP. Or they, uh, that's some people call it white labeling. If you just sell them like your module content and they put their own branding, but you can get a royalty for every time someone uses that. Um, that's another lane of licensing. That's another form of leveraging. But there are so many tools out there that you can use to make more money while you sleep. Cause like that's what they that's what they preach, right? In these internet streets. I want to make money. That's stripe ding. I want my stripe ding. Ding ding ding. When you can't get no stripe ding, you more like gonna get some cease and desist or they taking my stuff in the quotient type letters. To me, if you don't protect your stuff. Make mm-hmm. sense? Yes, yes, definitely. That makes so much sense. And I, but thank you so much for that that foundational definition because I really think it's so important for us as as creatives and creators to understand that just what you were saying, right? It's, it's a way to build up our assets. And so I think about my business and the things that I've created, like my lead magnets that I've created, the templates I use for my clients, the you know work your worksheets, all different kinds of things, the course that I that I just created of. Uh, all of these things are stuff that just really came out of my brain, right? Came mm-hmm. from my brain onto some paper and, you know, from, so it came from an idea to life, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and think about the things that you have in your business that you can use to, you know, to, to make more money. Like you were saying, like licensing, all that kind of good stuff. Like you could really, once you start to take, um, I know for me, like once I took stock of all of the stuff I've created, I started to really look at it a little differently because I was like, so I created an Excel spreadsheet and it was really just, it was an air table because I love air table now. Um, but either way, like I created a, sh- a sheet and it just says like, what is the name of it is? And where and a link to where it, where I house the document or the original document. And I created that for my brain's sake, to be able to be like, okay, like, where is all the stuff? But then when I started to, you know, take stock of that, I'm listening to, you know, things that you're saying and content that you're putting out. I'm looking like, wow, I actually have a whole lot of stuff that I've created that definitely needs to needs to be protected um, because I give these things out to people, people get access to stuff. So yeah, I, I love that. I, I think that that's just such an important um, way to really think about what you're doing is it's not just the individual workshops and things that you're creating, but it's a whole stack of things that you've created from your brain, including your blog posts and those kinds of things and your podcast episodes that you could leverage to make more money. Most definitely. And I think you did something that the average entrepreneur isn't doing, and that's actually taking stock of what they actually have. I think if most entrepreneurs actually sat down and made a list, whether it's in their notes on their iPhone, Google Sheets or Airtable, wanted, however you want 
and and you need to take stock of what you have because it's very hard for you to come to me in scenarios and say, Nakusha, they're using my stuff if we don't have a documented way to show that these ideas or whatever it is was actually yours. So often we give things away or we give people access. And that's another thing we can talk about is we give people access without understanding that there are IP protection tools at every stage of the game. And this is even before you register because so many people think, oh, Nikosha, I don't have the resources. I don't have the capital to actually protect everything that I own. So how do I leverage that? Well, there are IP tools at every stage of the game. There are ways that we can protect your intellectual property if you're just starting out and you're shopping around to get people to work with you. Um, there's ways we can protect once you actually get a solid prototype or a functioning idea or you finally got the module one done and things. There's IP tools at every stage of the game. I love that, y'all. Definitely. Like one, I I, t I knew I knew Nicole was gonna come and drop all these gems, y'all. And we only like five minutes in. Like, let's be clear. <laughs> because like Really, like, I love that we you mentioned that at every stage of your business. So most of the people that listen to this podcast have an idea that's established, that's bringing them, that's coming to life and that's bringing them money. And so they're in a, you know, and so I love that you mentioned that even if you are just starting out, because we do have people who are just starting out that listen to the podcast, like, even if you're just starting out, there are ways for you to protect yourself. Um, but what are some of those ways for the people who I would say are in that phase where they have launched an idea, it's making them money, they have some stuff out there. Because I'll, I'll, I'll be transparent and say, somebody stole my stuff once before too. Ooh. And I was just was like, I got my first deal. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this how you know you made it when somebody stole your shit? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Like, you up there, I was girl. just like, hmm, okay, I'm gonna side out that real quick. But, you know, so like, what is something that like, if you're in that area where you're like, you're already producing ideas and things and your ideas are already producing you money, what are some things that you should be thinking about um, in that stage of business? So if you're already launched and you already have an audience and you have buyers and things, one of the key things you need to be thinking about is, um, well, most of the people who are in the middle, they usually have a team, right? Mm -hmm. You usually have an assistant of some sort, whether a VA or, you know, a part-time assistant or even a full-time assistant. Do you have IP protection tools that's going to protect you against them? Mm. Come on and protect yourself against your team. You have to, oh, because yes. at the end of the day, what's the word I'm looking for? So at the end of the day, what you think is safe ain't really safe. And it's, it's usually ain't a third party that you don't know that's going to steal from you. It's usually somebody in your inner circle. Mm. And that's what people fail to realize. They're like, oh, well, oftentimes it's usually a contractor or somebody that they hired who's gone off and got their secret sauce. And then boom, they took their secret sauce and started leveraging exactly. Or it's an admirer or somebody in your sphere of, of influence that you probably know um, that has leveraged this. But one of the key things is if you're just starting out, I would most definitely do the inventory that you just suggested a, a while ago. Once you do the inventory, figure out which one of those assets are producing you the most income because that's how you can prioritize what is worthy of protection right now, especially if your capital is a little limited. Because even if you have launched, oftentimes capital resources is one of the things that plagues most women business owners or just online business owners or business owners in general is that capital, that cash flow. So you need to know how to allocate your dollars. So allocate your dollars to the things that are generating the most money because those have the most exposure and that will help you save because let's take a trademark. I'm in love with trademarks. I will fight you with Vaseline and Air Max's own if you tell me that trademarks ain't valuable because I will scrap with you like for real mm -hmm. because I believe that a business that don't own their trademarks is a business that ain't worth having. Mm, mm, come on come on I'm just I'm just saying what I'm saying somebody passed the collection so right. what I'm 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 serious so um those are because think about it this way if you inventory your stuff and you can out, outline what is generating the most income then boom when you come to an IP professional like me you can say hey Nikosha I've been in the game for boom boom bam here's proof of how I've been in the game boom boom bam now we can save you money when it's time to trademark instead of filing a little later in case you haven't already started which will cost you more money if you tell me, hey, Nikosha, I got this graphic, it's, it's generating a lot of buzz in my industry, I'm going to be like, boom, when did you publish it? Girl, I published it, boom. All right, cool, we can get that copyright file. 
just like that. Mm -hmm. You make it easier for the service provider who can help you with protection tools. You make it easier for them when you already have things cataloged, you know, your dates, you know, who has access to it. It makes it easier if we come up on a situation where you'd be like somebody handing my cookie jar in the grocery. We got to figure out who it is, Sean. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be like, well, come on in. Who know what a cookie jar is? <laughs> yeah. And all, and oftentimes y'all don't know how many people y'all didn't let know what a cookie jar is. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to have, you know, proper documentation. So that's another tool that people in the middle should definitely know who has access to what and when did I give them access and when did I take it away? Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that. So let me recap that. So the first thing we definitely need to make sure that we're doing is inventorying your assets. So making mm -hmm. a list of what you own, what you have, what you've created, all those things. And then you want to make sure that you go through that list and figure out which one of these things is making me the most money. Um, I love that. I love that because it's like, you know, what's it's, it's prioritization is important, right? Because we have so many things going on, but prioritization is important. I love that you also mentioned like trademarks, copyrights. Those are definitely things that we can focus on in this in this place of the uh, uh, this place that we're at, and making sure that we document who has access to what, when they got access, and when we revoked that access. I, you know, that is something that is very very actionable that we mm -hmm. can take, we can definitely start to do those kinds of things now. And even if you are feeling like I'm not ready, I don't know when you, I promise you, when you make a list of all the stuff that you've created, you start to realize, God damn, I'm actual business here. Like I'm actually creating shit. <laughs> for real, for real. And yeah. you probably have listeners right now. They're like, well, Nicosia, I haven't sold one thing. So what happens if I make my list and I don't have no income generating? All right, cool. Well, which one are you going to market with first? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. that will be your next level of prioritization. Which one am I going to market with first? And which one, even if I haven't made a sale, is there a way I can gauge my audience uh, interest in that particular thing? So these are all some additional factors. And one other thing I didn't mention that I, I will be remiss if I don't is contracts. You need to have contracts with everybody. I don't care if you selling it. Some people are like, well, I don't want to have a contract if it's less than five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars in the grocery. I don't know. Child boo. How many of you will say to me, Oh, in the quotia, it was only six hundred and fifty dollars, but that asking for a return. I'm a, a refund. And I'm gonna be like, Well, what's your service agreement say? I don't have one. Well, they saying that I ain't give them what they asked for. All right, what the agreement say? I don't have one. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you make my job so much harder when you don't have documented instructions. And they're not just for the for your protection. They're actually for the other party's protection as well. So when you go into presenting a contract, you can go into it with that lens and explain to the individual, this is not just for my benefit. This is for your benefit against me. Because if I don't do what I told you I was going to do, you now have recourse. You can say, Stacy, you told me my Facebook ads course would be available on this day. And you told me I would have access to this time. And you told me this and agreement say this and the this and that. And they can come to you and say, section three of the agreement said this and you ain't doing that. And you're going to be like, my bad. You right. You right. You right. All right. Right. Yeah. So it's not it's not just for um, contracts are not bad. And I think they sometimes get a bad rep, but they're definitely for everyone's protection. Yeah. I love that you mentioned that as well, because that's one of the things like I, I have, you know, contracts with my retainer clients and those kinds of things. But I think, you know, that really kind of extends to so many different areas of, of our business. Like you mentioned, like, you know, it's not just like, oh, it's under five hundred dollars. So you're good. So I love that you mentioned that. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask about is there's like, I feel like social media is always with every different aspect of everything is some kind of gray area where there's so much nuance to social media. How do we, how does IP work um, for when it comes to social media in a, in a sense of like, for example, I'm someone who is a business, I'm a business owner, I'm using Instagram or Facebook as my primary selling method. Um, okay. And even just talking organically now, because we're going to talk about advertising in a second, but if I'm posting on Facebook, posting on Instagram, and someone steals my content or someone takes my content and is posting on their page and, you know, that kind of thing is really, they're growing a following. How does that work? Or, or is there any, is that like a gray area or, or are there any protections that we have as business owners when it comes to um, these social platforms and the things that we're posting there? 
Okay. So I heard you saying, Akosha, I'm on Instagrams. I'm on the Tiki Takis. I'm on the book face. And I want to, someone has, it's been brought to my attention that someone is documenting my, stealing my stuff. Mm -hmm. Like my, my copy word for word, even my images, they just kind of swap me out and put them in type thing. Well, if you read, most people don't. If you read the uh, service agreement between you as a user on Facebook, you will learn that whatever you add to the platform, even though they do have the right to use certain things and all that stuff, but it's still your, it's still your content. You still own the copyright to the things. Um, It's sort of like how, I don't know if, if any of your audience has ever posted a video and Facebook or Instagram or uh, TikTok will say, hey, this has been flagged. That lets you know that they are monitoring things to make sure that there are, aren't any violations of people's intellectual property, their copyright rights. So um, you do have them. Um, but if you do see that, it goes back to, did you leverage it to an IP tool? Mm-hmm. How can you show Facebook? How can you show Instagram? How can you show TikTok that you are the actual rightful owner of these things? It goes back to leveraging the IP tools. And if you do that, you will be more in a power position. Now, I'm not telling you it's a it's a it's a it's a guarantee because remember you're going up against a computer that you got to go through to say, "Hey, I filled out the form." And then usually they have internal checks and balances that's usually ge- computer generated. They'll see did they check enough boxes here and there before it gets to a human review. And that's often hard. I do have clients who've come to me and say, hey, Nikosha, this person is still in my stuff. Well, um, I'll share this. So I had one client come to me and um, they became aware of an individual posting their stuff on social media. They gave me screenshots. Um, they were able to document where this person's business was. We were able to then draft a letter asking that person, very nice, nasty, yes. to stop and documented because my client had registered trademark. My client had registered copyright. So she had documented proof. What was hers was actually hers. So there's, it's more leverage for you. If you do what you're supposed to do, remember how I was telling you earlier, it makes it a lot easier to fight if you register and that way you can show I'm the documented owner. So like if you buy a house, right? You buy a house, you buy a condo, townhouse, shack, wherever you live in, that's your business. Um, You get a deed. Somebody can't say, oh, this is my parcel of land. You're going to be like, ah, ah. this right here say I'm the rightful owner. So mm-hmm. if something pop off, you can be like, look at that. That got my name on it. This got my parcel ID on it. They belong to me. Mm-hmm. They don't mm-hmm. know what they're talking about. It makes it easier if you can have a documented um, process to show it belongs to you that's all yeah. I'm saying yeah that's that's the key there definitely make, like as I'm pulling out what you're saying is to make sure that you're documenting for sure and that way whoever you're working with you know can can fight that battle for you and um pulling out that you also mentioned that the service agreements for these for these platforms says that it is our content so that is definitely something that is refreshing to know um and mm-hmm. someone did not read the service agreement don't nobody do it y'all just click that button and be like yeah come like, on yeah, Zuck. Terms. zuckerberg i accept the terms come on <laughs> yeah. give me my stuff give me my stuff yeah. i'm ready let me get to the people exactly so, no i get it i completely understand but Sometimes if you print it out, maybe in your leisure as an entrepreneur, you know, we get so much leisure time, <laughs> Right, <laughs> you can uh, review it. But oftentimes people pay me and that's what I do for a living. I tell people yeah. I re- I'm a, I'm a paid reader. I love that. I love that. <laughs> that is amazing because that is just like, like, I feel like everybody like use your skills, right? Like, you know, use your skills and all that stuff gets wrapped up. Um, so let's also, so we, so we talked about, you know, like kind of just organic social for the most part. I would love to dive into a little bit of talking about advertising. As you know, I'm always talking about ads, love yes. ads. And when I was thinking, I was preparing for this interview, it's so funny because I was thinking back to my days at Zappos and I, re- I like thinking back and remembering how many times I had to speak to legal. I, I literally <laughs> feel like me and legal, like one, one, you know, me and some of the legal team, like we became like really good colleagues and we were always talking and always, mm-hmm. you know, whether it was talking about influencer content and making sure those agreements are tight, 
whether it's, you know, working with other brands that are want to use our stuff or use our logos or, you know, that kind of or working with outside vendors, all that kind of stuff, really, like, I, I realized, like, wow, like, I really was working with legal a lot. And so it's got Mm -hmm. me started to thinking about when it comes to advertising or even kind of like, because that really kind of steps into a commercial space, right? Like you're not just kind of posting, um, you know, stepping into like that advertising space feels like it's more like commercial kind of things. You have to get the right licenses to use people's content or to use content and all that kind of stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. So can we, let's start with like, can we use other people's content in our ads? Like, and what does that look like when it comes to, um, CEOs that are thinking like, I want to be able to use this influencer content that, you know, or this UGC that I got, like just use generated content. My customers send me, send me, you know, photos of them using my products. Can I Mm -hmm. use those kinds of things in advertising or what kind of things, what kind of, can I, let me just start there. Can I use that kind of stuff in advertising? Here comes the the, the answer you really, really don't want. It depends. (laughs) (laughs) It depends on the circumstances. Um, Is that content under some type of restriction? Is it in the public domain? Is it, um, if it's user generated UGC content, did you get a release? Did you, um, if it's influencer content, are they documented that this is sponsored? Is it not sponsored? Cause you don't want the FTC coming after you. Listen, the FTC don't care whether you make $5, $20, $500,000, 3 million, they coming for you. They going to find you. They going to find you. Listen, they will find you, especially if you're using um, influencer and giving out free product or whatever. You need to make sure you're using the proper language when you are marketing these things. I think at the top of the question, you asked me, can I use um, other people's things in my marketing? It, it really depends. Um, there are what we call the fair use doctrine and it is very gray and it is very murky. That's a land that I don't like to live in because they don't have good snacks. Okay. <laughs> I don't like going over there. Stacy, mm-hmm. don't send me over there. Can yeah. we just, can we just rebrand? Can we do something else? So, <laughs> like we can't say this another way. Right. I'm pretty sure you got that same statement from legal with you. Is- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We can't do this another way. It got to be another way. But um, fair use doctrine just outlines, it's a copyright term, a lead, lead, leading principle where um, it says that you can use the copyrighted content of another individual if you meet this certain criteria. Like if you are doing a, a critique, if it's, um, if your educational purposes, like it's a whole list of, you know, things that you can, you know, kind of wedge under fair use. Um, But it's murky and the law is not clear. I mean, when has the law ever been clear on what is, what is and what ain't? I mean, there's a pending uh, case law right now in the Supreme Court, actually, as it relates to Andy Warhol's estate and the Prince um, photo, um, whether or not that he or his estate when that, um, that content was created actually had the rights to do it because there was another photographer that actually took the photos that they didn't end up using in the Vogue magazine. They gave it to Andy to do something different. Andy took the photos that wasn't necessarily used, recreated, reconfigured. So now the original photographer is alleging copyright infringement against the Andy Warhol estate. And now the Supreme court is going to have the, the right now has the ability to really define what is transformative, what is actually fair use. And so it's it's like popcorn ready. Like come June, I'm gonna have my popcorn when a lot of these decisions come out because it's really going to change the game and how we do a lot of stuff. So yeah. I, I know that was like a real roundabout answer, but at the end of the day, it depends. And if you don't have to use someone else's content, my leading answer is don't. <laughs> yes, I lo- I love that because like it would. It, one one thing I thought about is like so recently I saw an ad that um because I'm you know I'm always looking at ads I lo- I literally will stop and look at it and just like analyze what is this what's going on in this ad and so I saw this ad and it stuck out to me because it was Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion from the WAP video. Okay. And 
it was selling a course. And I was like, well, wait a minute. I don't think Cardi B or Meg Thee Stallion have a course that people can buy on Facebook. So why are you using their likeness in your advertising? And so that just something I just was like, is that, can you do that? Like can, can with they- their permission only, yeah. like if you're going to use the likeness of for a commercial selling purpose, you definitely need to get permission. That's what we call getting a license of use. And it's expensive. It, it can be very expensive to do, very time consuming to do. Um, I always give the example that's more tangible to people is more like in music. You notice how a lot of music is sampling a lot of other music that came before it. Well, oftentimes albums can get, you know, delayed in their release if they don't get the proper clearance mm-hmm. for use. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember back in... Uh, think Nicki Minaj for example Nicki Minaj wanted to use um Tracy Chapman a sample from Tracy Chapman I think it was Fast Car or something and Tracy Chapman who owns the rights to her stuff said no (laughs) she said not sis (laughs) she told she told Nicki no so it's one of those things that being the lawful owner you get to say yes you get in the words of my favorite movie of all time a pretty woman we get to say who we get to say where we get to say when yes so that's the beauty of being the lawful owner of things yes come on and be the lawful owner of things and be able to say all of those things I love that that is that is so helpful in in really thinking about how are all of our digital assets you know how important they are and how important it is to be the legal owner of your digital assets and so what we're thinking about now, because we've had so much context of like why we need to protect our assets, you know, all the, all the some of the things that we can do, but like, how do we know when it's time to call you? Like, if I'm saying like, okay, when is it time to call Nicosia to be like, okay, now I, is, is there a certain stage in business I need to be in? Um, where do I need to be to be like, okay, let me work, start to work with an IP attorney. In the beginning. Mm-hmm. Can I, can I talk a little loud? In yeah. the beginning. Yes. Come to me, oh faithful ones. Um, <laughs> when your heart is troubled. Um, no, for seriously, in the beginning, because I can be involved in the pre-development process to let you know whether or not the name that you want to name your service is available. I can let you know whether or not some of the images that you want to use are actually available to be used. I can very much so help guide the process, and it will cost you so much and time, money, and energy if you bring me in early. Because if you wait, let's say you are in the middle, right? You're a middle CEO, you already have a course, you already have something that's generating a lot of money, boom, boom, bam. And you're like, okay, I'm ready to trademark. I got you in the course. Here you go, boom, here go the name of my course. Well, in my process, I um, do a knockout search. That's what we call it. And I, or clearance search. It's like a combination of the two. And I look and see what's already in the space. So then I'm going to tell you, Stacy. unfortunately, there's someone who's already filed for a trademark in the same place, in the same class that we want a trademark. And you're going to be like, hi, Nicosia, I did a Google search. Hi, Nicosia, I had to download, I got the social media name. Hi, Nicosia, I own a name on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, the domain. I got it all. And I'm going to be like, well, they got a piece of paper that predates your social media, that predates your domain, that predates your first sale. They got all of that, boo. And the federal government, when it comes to trademark, says that if they have a federal registration, they are the lawful owner. It's presumptive that they are the lawful owner until proven otherwise. You got money for that? You ready to fight? Come on, Craig. I ain't ready to fight. Mm -mm, I ain't ready. Hide your chain. Mm -mm, I ain't ready. I love that. First of all, I love that you are dragging us at 5.30 p.m. in the evening because I'm sitting here like, damn, need to put my I need to get me a a, a meeting on the question. <laughs> Come on, all ye who what is like Bible butter go, me. all ye He's who are me. troubled. <laughs> <laughs> because that's so like it's so key because it's like you don't want to end up in a place where you're like, okay, I built this big business and I built mm-hmm. this around this name of a course that somebody owns right just because you own the domain doesn't mean that you own the piece of paper that says that this is your shit. Like you are so I, correct. And like, I had, yeah. I had to break many hearts. Like Miley, my like Miley Cyrus daddy, with the with the rat tail. Don't break my heart, my achy breaky heart. I had to do it, Stacy. I had to do it. I'm telling you, I had to break this 
apart one day, this woman was generating almost $150,000 in sales in two quarters with something. And she came to me and she was like, Nicole, I'm ready to trademark. Look, look at my sales. I got revenue. I'm out here, cuz. And I went to go do what I do. And I had to slide that paper over to her and tell her, unfortunately, ma'am, there's someone already in this space. And if we go and file our application, they they predate you. And more likely than not, they're going to fight you, cuz. Mm -hmm. And I ain't got that much Vaseline and neither do you. Right. So here is the name and number of a marketing that we agency that can rebrand us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and think about that. Think about the blood, sweat, and tears you put into your branding. That if you had to right now, would your audience be able to recognize something new? And that's where entrepreneurs fail. Trademarks is ultimately a source identifier. So the audience that comes to know your product or service will know when they see that particular logo, slogan, coloring, phrasing, they know exactly who the source of it is. That's the whole point of getting the trademark protection. Mm -hmm. So when I see the Coca-Cola symbol, I know I'm going to get a good quality burn on my throat, you know, burn it in the back of my throat mm -hmm. type situation. But if I see something that say cola on it, I'm more likely, it may be similar, but it ain't Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? So it's one of those things where you got to think about your audience and rebrand it. Like, think about that loyalty, that no like, and trust. When you do a rebrand, baby, you you battling. You mm -hmm. battling things you can't even see. I'm sorry, it ain't worth it, Miss Seeley. It ain't worth it. As the saying go, find somebody else to do it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That is so so informative and because it's like like it, yeah because a rebrand gonna cost you some money anyway right and it's probably mm -hmm. gonna cost you more money than it would cost if you went to Nicole first hello, right? hello. girl <laughs> you gotta you... get the new domain you gotta get the new all the things right all get the, the website things. redone you gotta get all like everything has to be redone if you end up realizing like oh shoot I am using somebody else's you know somebody else's stuff so this has just been such an, a great informative conversation about IP and protecting our, and really protecting ourselves as entrepreneurs and protecting our visions and our ideas and the things that we bring to life. So tell everyone how they can connect with you, how they can work with you if they want to, um, if they want to um, go down this route of protecting themselves. Tell us all the things and um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like Stacy, y'all, if y'all could see I'm about because I'm saying, yeah, because I'm like, look, I need to let me take notes on how I need to get on the closest calendar and go ahead and get me a consult because come on, like, come I don't, on. Like, usually like when I'm doing these podcast interviews, I'm like, I'm always learning stuff, but I'm like, I feel like this episode was specifically for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was. You know, his time and be on time. It'd be always on time. But no, I am all over Al Gore's internet. I am the only Nequosha. If you Google N-E-Q-U-O-S-H-A, it'll be in your show notes, people. Mm -hmm. I get it. It'll be in the show notes. I promise. You can Google me. Um, you can, uh, my name of my law firm is Anderson Law Firm, PLLC. So let me just dispel some myths. Please don't cut this part out. Yes. I practice intellectual property law. That means that I can service you in all 50 states. You ain't got to live what I live. You ain't got to be Thanks where I be. <laughs> you could, listen, I live where Mickey Mouse live, down in the Sunshine State, okay? If you don't live in the Sunshine State, if it's a little snowy and cloudy where you at, God bless you, be safe. But I can still help you as long as you got internet, mm -hmm. as long as you got a viable business. As long as you're open and willing to, you know, protect your things, I'm your girl. So all you got to do is click the link in the show notes. You will visit my law firm and you click that book a consultation button at the tippity top and you'll get access to my calendar. It's easy peasy. It ain't hard. I am not one of the, you know, this is my rant. I am not one of those. <laughs> I am not one of those service providers that makes it hard for people to work with me. My goal is to make it as easy and peasy as I possibly can. And baby, you'll see. Come on over to the other side. This is what a real G's ride. And we got snacks. And we got snacks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes oh my goodness so thank you so much for Nicole for coming because this has been the probably one of the funniest funnest episodes I have recorded of this podcast come on so thank you so much um and yeah definitely y'all the make sure y'all visit the show notes we now have our show notes available on our site so head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast 
and you'll see all of our podcasts there. You'll be able to jump into the show notes of this episode. And we'll, we're going to make sure that Nicole's law firm is linked there. We're going to make sure that her um, social links are there as well. Um, anything else you want to leave us with before we close down? No, I just think that entrepreneurships can be scary and journey, but it's a beautiful ride. Trust the process, trust yourself and just make decisions as best for you, boo. Yes. Come on with it. Yes, yes, yes. Love that. And on that note, we will see y'all next Tuesday for the next episode of Roadmap to a Million. Make sure that y'all share this with a friend. Definitely one of your entrepreneurial friends that's like creating some stuff, that's making some money and just be like, hey, sis, I'm going to slide this podcast episode over to you to make sure that you are protecting yourself like I am about to go and protect myself and get myself on the coach's calendar. So thanks so much for listening, y'all. I will see y'all next week. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Roadmap to One Million podcast. I just know you got a nugget or two from that episode that will take your brand to the next level if you take action. Keyword, take action action. So head over to stacyzeal.co slash checklist to get a free resource that will help you to take action on what you learned today so that you can get on to building the brand of your dreams. And be sure to leave us a review so businesses like yours can get this gold as well. All right, y'all. I'll see you on the next episode.